Am I the jerk for not making my sibling's soon-to-be ex-spouse give up their plane ticket to my sibling's current partner? My brother, who is 36 years old, filed for divorce from his wife of three years just two months ago after he discovered that she had been cheating on him. Before her secret came to light, my family and I planned a week-long vacation to Orlando, Florida, which we will be taking late next month. Three months ago, tickets were already paid for. My brother paid full price for his ticket while contributing towards his ex-wife's ticket, who also contributed a little more than he did. However, after he filed for divorce, he started dating his current girlfriend. They have been together for a month and a few weeks now. Last Sunday, my parents hosted a dinner at their home, and my brother's girlfriend was invited. We were talking about the trip, and when my sister, who is 28 years old, suggested that my brother's ex-wife get a room of her own since the two are no longer together, I noticed a look on his girlfriend's face. However, she said nothing and stayed quiet. After dinner, the girlfriend pulled me aside and said that she had no idea my brother's ex-wife was still going on the trip. My response was a simple, yes. She proceeded to tell me that she was not comfortable with the idea of the ex-wife still being allowed to go on the trip. She then asked if it was okay for the ticket to go to her instead, since she is now with my brother. I politely told her that I didn't think it would be right for me to give her my former sister-in-law's ticket since she did contribute money towards it. The girlfriend then asked me if I didn't think it was disrespectful to her if I was still allowing the former sister-in-law to go on the trip. I told her that I'm sorry she feels that way, but that I still wasn't going to make my ex-sister-in-law give up her plane ticket. I also told her that she was more than welcome to purchase her own ticket and come with us if she wanted to. That wasn't good enough for her because she still didn't want to see the ex-wife's face on the trip. The main reason why my brother's girlfriend is not comfortable with the ex-wife still being around is because of their unfortunate encounter. According to my brother, a couple of weeks ago, his girlfriend was at my brother's house when the former sister-in-law showed up to collect some more of her things. The sister-in-law ended up disrespecting the girlfriend and starting a heated altercation with her. I don't condone my sister-in-law's behavior towards my brother's girlfriend, but I also don't see why she should be uninvited from a trip after she had already paid for her own ticket. Not to mention, as my sister said, the former sister-in-law can just get a separate room. So, am I wrong? The girlfriend really needs to have this conversation with her boyfriend, not with anyone else. You're not in a position to give away someone else's paid ticket. That's just not your call to make. If the ex-wife wants to give it up, that's her choice, but it's not your decision. It's honestly strange that the girlfriend isn't seeing the red flags in the whole situation. Am I the jerk for not letting someone who has a crush on me know that I have a girlfriend and allowing them to call my girlfriend a stupid person after she told them? I am a student attending my O-levels in my country. I am approximately three months into my academic year. Not so long ago, my best friend told me that a girl in his class has a crush on me. She is a decent-looking Chinese girl with glasses, and my friend thinks she's pretty. Last week, she bumped into me and developed a crush on me. She asked my best friend if he knew about me and told him she was interested. My best friend informed me and forwarded her messages to me. My girlfriend and I had a lot of problems and misunderstandings last year, leading to multiple breakups. However, we are now back together, trying to fix our issues and are in a positive situation. We kept our relationship a secret for a long time and denied everything our friends told us about us dating. Recently, I told my best friend about our relationship, so he knew I had a girlfriend when the other girl told him she had a crush on me. My friends and my girlfriend have a lot of unspoken tension, but they are overall supportive sometimes. My best friend thought that the new girl was more attractive than my girlfriend and suggested I keep her as a second choice in case I break up with my girlfriend. We currently do not have plans to break up as we are dating with the intention to marry. The girl added me on Discord and I neglected it for about a day before accepting because she told my best friend to tell me to. My friend is trying to look out for me because he thinks the new girl is more suitable with my looks. She started talking to me on Discord, and I replied dryly, trying to get her to lose interest in me since I don't want her to have a full-on heartbreak and hate me or my girlfriend. My girlfriend shares classes with her, so she asked her if she knew me. I had informed my girlfriend about everything and the girl's crush on me before she asked her. My girlfriend was willing to play along and allowed her to get closer to me. As time went on, the girl escalated our situation, and I tried to slow it down because that was the opposite of what I wanted to happen. One day, the girl found out that I was dating my girlfriend. She asked my best friend, and he acted like he didn't know to save his reputation. She also asked my girlfriend, and that was when she found out the truth. We had expected this to happen sooner or later. She called my girlfriend stupid and yelled at her for not letting her know sooner and misleading her. Afterwards, she blocked both me and my girlfriend. My girlfriend feels bad and sorrowful for the girl since this wasn't our initial intention. Our goal was to ease her off without unnecessary drama. Am I the asshole for this? Leading her on is way worse, and it makes you seem untrustworthy to your girlfriend. You should have told this girl the truth right away, whether or not your girlfriend or friend wanted you to. What is so hard about casually mentioning your girlfriend so she doesn't think you're single? I can see why you and your girlfriend broke up before with this level of immaturity. Am I the jerk for not telling my friend about where I'm applying to? We have been friends for four years since college and flatmates for the past year. Last week she had a competition where I went to support her. 
Unfortunately, the team lost the finals and came in second. I had not planned on drinking, but everyone started to, so I did too. I have never been blackout drunk, and have only drunk 8 times in my life. That night, I had too many drinks. I drank 5 glasses of wine, 3 glasses of whiskey and 2 thirds of a beer as I started to converse with people. I do not remember much after I blacked out. The next morning my friend started screaming at me about my actions the previous night. She said I embarrassed her by talking unhinged to a teacher, taking a cigarette inside the canteen where people were having dinner, and needing to be taken out. On the cab ride home, they had to take care of me instead of having a team meeting to discuss the loss. She also called me secretly competitive because I met someone I have known for 8 years who offered me an internship at the place she wanted to go. The competition's winner would secure an internship there. She said I broke her principle of friendship by not informing her and attacking her territory. I understand I am very competitive. I am desperate to get out of the financial rut and support my family as soon as I graduate. I acknowledge and am deeply ashamed of my behavior that night. I have always extended myself beyond my means to support her. I have cooked for her before competitions, cleaned the house, listened to her rant, and made sure she is not pressured by anything. I have been very supportive every time except that one night under alcohol. I will not use alcohol as an excuse because I did choose to drink. She said she did not want to be friends when I begged her for forgiveness. She said hurtful things, bringing up issues I shared with her in vulnerable situations. She weaponized my own issues against me. She also tried to sabotage my relationship with another close friend. I had to sit them together to tell the third girl my point of view and found out she has been spreading lies about me. I do not know what to do or say. She is very important to me, but I am also very private about sharing my applications. I do not mean malice or wish to win at her cost. It is a level playing field, and no one's name is written over opportunities. I cannot sustain a friendship based on an obligation to inform her of my applications. I do not think being selfish in one area of your life is wrong. But please tell me if it is. Am I in the wrong? Because she does not want to put in the effort. I have sworn off drinks, and if I ever do drink, I will be mindful of my intake because I do not want to hurt the people I love. That is the only way I can make sure something like this never happens again. But am I a bad friend here? Is one night enough to undo everything I have done to show love, care, and support for the past four years? You did nothing wrong here. You're entitled to apply wherever you want without needing to inform her. The world is a tough place and it takes money, so may the best person win. It's pretty odd if you guys are friends, but still, you did nothing wrong here. Am I the jerk for telling my cousin that it's not their birthday so they need to get over it? Recently, my aunt and her children came down for my nan's birthday. One of her children, an 8-year-old girl, had a birthday at the end of June. When I, a 21-year-old woman, went around to say hello, since the last time we saw them was Christmas, my cousin kept asking about her birthday present. I thought being a little kid of course, she would think she was going to get presents. I joked with her, telling her that there was no present for her and that it was our nan's birthday. She dropped it for a while, went back to coloring and ate her dinner. When I had to run out to the car, she decided to follow. This is where I might be the one at fault. On our way to the car she kept asking if I was going to get her birthday present, if she had a birthday present, and why she hadn't received a birthday present. I grew up in a family where if you don't expect anything, you won't be disappointed, but I felt so frustrated that I turned around and said, your birthday was last month. There is no birthday present. You need to get over it and grow up. The look on her face made me realize I heard her, but again, I didn't want her to think or grow up thinking that just because it was her birthday or past her birthday, she should get a present. She ran inside all upset and told on me, saying how I was rude and told her that it wasn't her birthday. Most of the adults were looking at me. Nobody said anything, but I just knew they were disappointed in me for going off at an 8-year-old. I didn't know how else to go about it. She is 8. I didn't want her to turn into a spoiled brat, thinking that she should expect a gift every time she sees someone. For context, I never said her birthday wasn't important. I just wanted to get through to her that it's past her birthday, and she needs to understand she's not going to get a gift every time. My mom's side of the family relights the candles and lets their kids blow them out just so they don't get upset and throw a tantrum. My mom doesn't agree with that since kids spit, but all her siblings who have kids think it's a good way to prevent crying. A side note, nobody else had gifts for my cousin, all the gifts were for my nan. My cousin just expects everything is for her, including things that aren't for her. She's very spoiled, her parents have never said no to her. You behaved properly, you were calm and told her the news already but she wasn't hearing you, so you were a little more clear after still being asked. It's not okay that the child expected something from you. Eight is old enough to be told she doesn't get a present when it's not her birthday. Would I be the asshole if I set down hard rules for my father-in-law who lives with me? I am a 34-year-old female married to my husband, a 38-year-old male, for 7 years. 3 years ago my father-in-law, an 84-year-old male, moved into our apartment with us. My father-in-law has progressively become a handful since moving in. He has destroyed the room and most of the furniture. He has become combative and thinks that we should not be able to tell him to take care of himself or the room. 
He is medically unable to take care of himself and cannot live independently. He does not understand his medications or how they work and will ignore you if you try to explain. He has been refusing to shower often, maybe once a week if we are lucky, and only changes his clothes every four days because he claims he does not sweat and cannot smell it so he does not smell. The room reeks. He does smell and it is very strong. I am having to check his room for trash, tape, and random plastic that he leaves everywhere on the ground as he does not clean his messes. When he first moved in, we established that he could not leave stuff laying around like that because we have cats, and he said he would not but has never actually tried to keep it out of their reach. He has fished things out of the trash, mostly containers that he does not use, and hides them under his bed. I am honestly so fed up. I will not live in a small apartment with a trash hoarding man who will not bathe because he is lazy and not for any medical reasons. He does not have dementia and appears to be very lucid when he wants to be. On Saturday we are deep cleaning his room because the smell is starting to drift into other parts of the apartment and I am at my limit. I told my husband that I am throwing away the trash and the trashed lamps and shelf that he destroyed. At this point, they are also unsafe because of all the modifications he has made to them. We already ordered a new lamp and a shelf that we are gluing together so he cannot pull it apart. I am not really going to be asking if I can change these as I genuinely think the lamp is a fire risk with the wires being exposed and how he has cut into it. The shelf does not even have screws and is mostly in pieces at this point. We also ordered him a new bed foundation that he can no longer hide things under as it is covered and soft-sided. The reason I am wondering if I am the asshole is while I was talking with my husband tonight about how I am very frustrated about the mess and the way his dad has been talking down to both of us this last week, especially, I mentioned that I am not asking if I can remove literal trash from his room. My husband made an offhand comment about how I have been talking in a mean way this week and that I am kind of being an asshole. I am honestly so tired and I know I have built up resentment, but I do not think I am wrong here. However, I know I could be clouded with anger. So, would I be the asshole if I remove the trash and do not give my father-in-law a choice here? You handled things appropriately, but honestly, it sounds like your father-in-law's care needs are getting beyond what you can reasonably manage, and his actions are putting himself and you in danger. It might be time to have some difficult conversations with your husband about whether it's realistic for his dad to continue living with you, and whether a residential care home is an option to consider now or in the near future. There is no shame in seeking this kind of help. He needs more care than you and your husband can provide. And with his likely neurological state, there is no reasoning with him, as he likely won't remember your discussion. Am I the jerk for referring to my sibling as a stranger? I have been contemplating sharing this story for a while, but I feel the need to get this off my chest. I, a 16-year-old female, and my sister, an 18-year-old female, have always had a rocky relationship. Not for any particular reason, but because of her grudges. My sister, who I will call Anna for the sake of the story, is a completely normal person with no psychological problems whatsoever, at least from what I know. Anna tends to get mad over small things that have no significance whatsoever and will not talk to me or my brother, a 21-year-old male, for months, even years on end. The longest she has gone without talking to me or my brother was for 5 years, from when I was 8 to 13 years old. The reason? I, I have no idea. She wouldn't tell us. For some background, my mother died 2 years ago, as she and my father were divorced since I was about 7. Also, my brother and I were and still are very close. After that 5-year period, Anna came to me crying after my mother's death and apologized for all the years she went without talking to me and my brother. I forgave her as I was young at the time and went on with my life. The three of us slowly started mending our relationship with one another until Anna started up with her grudges again. It started off small. She would get mad at me or my brother and not talk to us for a couple of weeks. Then weeks turned into months. Now currently she is still mad at me and my brother for about a year now. She is mad at me because I wouldn't let her practice braiding on my hair. So childish, I know. Both my brother and I have brought this issue to our father, but he never really seems to care. When he does say something, it is usually along the lines of, she's your sister or, I all are family, you shouldn't be having these problems. Even though it isn't our fault. Now, as of today, Anna is leaving for college out of state in a few weeks. I made a remark in front of my dad, saying how the house isn't going to feel any different, because she doesn't speak to anyone anyway. He asked what I meant by that, and I simply told him that Anna being in the house feels like I'm living with a stranger, and my brother feels the exact same way. I have gotten so used to it that I don't even realize she is there most times if she is not laughing at something on her phone or talking to herself. So I am a little conflicted. Do I just let her go to college without trying to mend our relationship once more? Or do I talk to her and see what I can do so that we can be cordial again? You are not the bad guy in this situation for referring to her as a stranger. It's not on you to fix what has happened, especially if she doesn't seem to value much of a relationship with you. If your dad wants to make a big fuss over it, suggest family counseling but he has to organize it if he really wants it to happen. It would be nice if you were on good terms, but it's not your responsibility to be the fixer. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist in the description.